Bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remnant brothers and sisters, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Greetings, greetings to you all. By now you have seen the topic, a very serious situation that is taking place at this time. There's a great storm that is now at our borders all over the world. And a lot of people don't have a clue what is going on. But in my meditation, there's something that, you know, comes home to me real clear concerning where I live in Jamaica. And um, honestly, it has allowed me to understand where I'm at is marked. It's marked, my remnant brothers and sisters. What do I mean by that? Geographically, as a watchman, I already knew from the beginning that there are places when all hell breaks loose are going to experience things more intense. There are places that are going to experience things more severe. Let me give you a perfect example. Um, when the big C came out, November 2019 into 2020 and beyond. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. We, we saw what took place in China. We saw what took place in Australia. And we saw what took place in Canada. These three names that I call, what the citizens experience at these three places there are many places in the world that did not experience the terror and the hardship that a lot of people faces in these three places. Um, things were so severe in Australia where you had situations like concentration camps taking place. It was so intense. And so, even in America, based on, you know, you have uh, 50, 52 states, correct me, you know, I don't remember, but America have over 50 states. Now, if you remember in the big C, you have places in America that people are going through extreme hardship. And you have places that it was a little more mild. Places like Texas and Florida, things was not that intense and severe. But then you have place like, places like New York. My God Almighty, we're <coughs> the, the lockdown and what was taking place, all the, 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 the protocols was more intense. <coughs> so, my remnant brothers and sisters, Based on where we are, even we think of um, martyrdom, you know, many will be dying for the gospel. They're going to be, they're, the reality is that they're going to be places that are going to experience things more intense than others. Now, I see all of that to say this. I used to personally, understanding this, say to myself, well, I live in the Caribbean. In spite of the last days, all the world will be impacted as what happened with the big C. But I always say, I'm not in the Middle East. I'm not in China and all these places. So I think things are going to be more mild. That's what I used to say. But if you're a Jamaican, I don't, know many, I don't know how much Jamaican people watch my channel. I don't know how many Jamaican subscribers I have. But if you're a Jamaican, you need to be concerned. Because what I've discovered, and I know it's the Lord's 
you know, doing by spirit. In meditation, talking with a sister the other day, and after the conversation, meditating again, I realized, my remnant brothers and sisters, that there is something about Jamaica. There is something about Jamaica and the global elites. And what I've found out is that this nation is chosen as a testing ground for this side of the region. Just like how you have China that has been a testing ground for the social credit system. And just as how you had places like Australia and these places that was used you know, for, you, know, you know, for practicing how to get something ready to execute throughout the world. Here in Jamaica, it's no different, my remnant brothers and sisters. Because what I've found out, and I don't know if you already know, but Jamaica is the first Amatrafak country in the world. Jamaica is ready to be the first to announce, to declare to the world that we are fully digital. There's a move, it's already declared that we will be the first in this region and even globally to become fully digital. And this has been announced. This has been announced by our Prime Minister. Now, my remnant brothers and sisters, this is serious. Because when you're talking about going fully digital, I want you to understand something. Help me, Holy Spirit. Is that as, the, as I strategically shared the video the other day with the Prime Minister, I, I allow you to hear his words. So it's not fiction. As I believe that it was the Lord himself. You know, the heart of kings are in the hands of the Lord. And the Lord do as he please. I believe it's the Lord's doing why the prime minister went so detailed in the plan moving forward concerning moving from paper base and going digital. And even now, a lot of people really don't know, majority don't understand the great danger in this. And I'm going to give you a few examples. Because when you go digital, that means that all the paper money will become useless. Cashless, a cashless society. I've been sharing this, I've been teaching this for more than... 20 years I've been teaching and sharing this that this time would come when I was a youth president bless the name of Jesus many laughed at me many many you know my name was being bashed all over the place I to, to people I'm an idiot even to this day I'm a madman my remnant brothers and sisters the question is how can you go fully digital when at the same time, more than 60% of the population in Jamaica doesn't have an account, a bank account. What is going to happen to that 60%? Or more, because number one, many don't have an account, not because they don't want a bank account. Many don't have an account because they cannot afford an account. This is a third world country. No. With the other 40%, you will find more than 20% out of that 40%. That yes, they have an account. But the account is somewhat dormant. They only have enough in that account to keep it open. And so you'll have some that will have a merely $3,000 or $4,000. 
just to keep it open. But there's no money in it so that you can live by it. And so the reality of Jamaica at this time is that you will find maybe 15% of Jamaicans who have an account that is sustainable. 15% out of 100%. And so persons like myself who don't have an account will be left out of the system. Now, we have a bank here that is called JNNN. They are the ones that they have been calling people to come in and get the machines. They have already prepared the machines for going digital, right? Now, watch this. What is going to happen to the corner shops? The small business owners who run a corner shop. If you're in America and all over the world and you don't know what a, what a corner shop is like. A corner shop is such a small business that in the bread safe you, will may, you, you may have maybe five bread, five loaves of bread. On the shelf where the tin mackerels are, a small corner shop the owner can only afford to have a dozen tin mackerel. Maybe six tin of canned beef. Just a small bucket of flour where they sell pound for pound. You know, a small bucket of sugar. When they purchase at the big supermarket, there are some business owners that can only afford to buy 25 pound of sugar. Some only can afford to buy 10 pound of sugar. And from that they sell a half pound or a pound or a two pounds. And when it's done, they go back to the big supermarket. That's what a corner shop is all about. You have a few candles, maybe half dozen pack fab for washing. You know, just a few items. That is what most corner shop in Jamaica is like. No. For a business like that to become digital, let's look at the consequence. Because even if that business owner get the machine, what is going to happen to her, um, her or him customer base? Because who, the question is, who are the ones who purchase from a corner shop? Not those elite customers who are of the 15% who have an LT account. Because the elite customers <coughs> who purchase things for their home doesn't go to a corner shop. The elite ones who have an LT account, they go to the supermarket. They don't shop at a corner shop. It's the little small man that live from day to day who get up early in the morning and buy half pound of sugar. Maybe half of bread because there are places in Jamaica that a, a person cannot afford one loaf of bread for, for, for $600. So they can maybe afford to buy half for $300. And so that corner shop owner will cut that bread in half and sell half. You have places in Jamaica that you have the sliced bread. And so you'll have a, a, a customer only can afford to buy four slices out of that package of bread. So, how can you go digital when you have that small business who are going to be the ones where your customer is going to come from. So my remnant brothers and sisters, what I'm showing you at this time 
is that these small businesses will be deleted. Automatically, they will be flushed out of the system. It's a setup. And a lot of people are treating this like, you know, this is just moving forward into the future. This is just something new coming. Without understanding the great change that is coming. No, for those who can afford to go digital, being that you have enough in the account, so you have a good job, so you can continue in this digital movement that is going forward. The question is, if there's an hurricane, we live in a, a, a hurricane zone. And so if there's a category 4 or 5 hurricane, a category 3, a category 2, because the electric um, system that we have, the system that gives us electricity in Jamaica, it is so fragile, my brothers and sisters, that even when we get a tropical depression, lights goes out for weeks. If it's a tropical storm, light the light goes out for weeks. Much more an hurricane. I remember when we had Hurricane Gilbert years ago. You see, if you're a Jamaican, share this video. Because a lot of people don't realize what our Prime Minister is getting us into. When we had Hurricane Gilbert, I remember as a little boy, where I live, for more than four months, we were out of electricity when we had Hurricane Gilbert. And there were places in Jamaica that was out of electricity for more than two years. When Gilbert hits, and my remnant brothers and sisters, what is going to happen when you go digital and when after the tropical storm, the tropical depression or an hurricane, God forbid, which I know it's coming, after an earthquake, when the aftermath and you survive and you have the paper money that you can go to the corner shop, to purchase because you have the live cash. When the system crash, how will we do transaction? In a scenario of a disaster, what is going to happen? I hear the prime minister because he's so eloquent. And how he put his things forward. People are so dumbed down. The society is so ready to be deceived. Easily programmable. To the point where he's saying that, you know, because we are in a time of laziness. Where people are just downright lazy. And so, <clears throat> what they have done, they have conditioned the world. One of their greatest tools Get this, get this in this video. One of the greatest tools the world elites are using under the Antichrist is laziness. They have been conditioning society to become so lazy without people knowing. We are, because they know that this is coming, you know. It's their plan. And so they have been conditioning us to fit into their plan. Where people don't want to stand in line anymore. People have a problem to, 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 to join a line. People have a problem just to drive to the bank. People have a problem just to get to that business place to do business transaction. And so what they have done, they have conditioned the world society. Where people just want to sit down in their sofa. Lie in their bed and just press few buttons. And they have made it become so easy that you don't even have to dial on the phone anymore. Just talk to the phone. 
And it seems to me like they want to take it further. Where go, it's going to come a time where you don't even have to talk to the phone. But just think the thing and it happens. Just think. That's the level of laziness. That they are, they are conditioning the world. And this is how they are getting their advantage. Because I hear the Prime Minister says in one of his briefings. You know, gone are the days where you have to, um, you, you have papers. And so you have the document and you have to bring the document to the bank. Those days are over. You know, you have the paper, so <coughs> you have to go into, um, um, you have a situation at the JPS, uh, um, the electricity company. And so you have to literally go there. You want to renew your passport and you have to literally drive there. Those days are over. You can stay home. You don't have to go out and interact. You don't have to go out and socialize. I wonder if people is listening the wording. Because this is all about social distance. This is all about the agenda of the Antichrist. And what they're using is laziness. My remnant brothers and sisters. And people don't realize. That. The day they have power over your money. Is the day. When they will totally control you. Like what happened to the truckers in Canada. I, I hope all have seen what happened with the truckers in Canada. When the elites eventually have total power over your money, like what happened in China, this credit social system, that's the day they will totally have power over you. And if you realize when Jesus was in the earth, Jesus was not about money. Jesus didn't have any interest in money. To the point when they came to him for tax. Jesus had was to send his disciple to catch one fish. Search them out. Whatever you find in the, you know, it was a piece of gold thing. Very valuable. Just give it to them. And Jesus went on with his business. There was no area. In this world, there was nothing, no system in this world that was able to have Jesus under a lockdown. There was nothing that you could do to control Jesus. And when we read the lives of the apostles, the disciples, there was nothing in the system that was able to control the apostles. And when we go back to the Old Testament... When we look on Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, there was nothing about the system that you could use to control those holy men of God. And all that is taking place at this time, my remnant brothers and sisters, is a setup, a global setup. And why do I say that Jamaica is marked? Is because I started to reflect on what has been happening in previous years. I remember in one year, we had the beast that came to our shore. The beast didn't go to any other Caribbean island. <laughs> if you know of any trip from the beast to any other Caribbean island, let me know. But Obama came to Jamaica. Of all the Caribbean islands, Obama came here. And that bulletproof vehicle that uh, uh, um, he traveled around with. The pet name, the beast. Even the beast was shipped down. <coughs> so that the beast could sit in the beast and travel the island. Obama came and 
Portia Simpson Miller at the time was the Prime Minister. And even now I feel a bit sorry for Portia because I can only imagine her and this man alone, both of them alone locked into a room. No cameras, no nothing. And they had a private conversation. And a little while after that, Portia Simpson Miller was out of politics. She walked away. And of all what is happening in the island, we have not been hearing anything from this ex-prime minister. And I wonder why. I honestly believe that this woman heard some things. She's, she's no more in politics. That year, the beast came. The president of Japan came. That year, the president of France came. The queen's sister, in the very same month, came. My God Almighty, a whole host of elites visit Jamaica. And even this very moment, we have so much top executive persons, African leaders and all different sort of world leaders coming into our, our nation. Even as I speak, there's this man, I forget his role, but he's here doing a workshop with our leaders at this time. He's here for two days to do a workshop. There's just this great interest when it comes on to Jamaica. Bill Bill, he has a cottage at a, at a, at a guest house um, a few miles away from where I live. He, has a, he, he, he owns a place. Yes, Bill Bill owns a place in, in, in Jamaica. And when the big sea hit, he was here on a yacht. There's something about Jamaica. And so you can see why our leader is not holding back. Because what they have done, they have, the elites have made sure that they have gotten a leader in place to execute everything that they desire swiftly. <clears throat> they made sure that they found a leader that desired two things. One, they, a leader that desired power. Two, a leader that desired wealth. A young leader with great ambition. A young leader that de desire power and wealth. And they, have, and they have found that leader in our prime minister. And so what they do, they keep taking him away in private meetings. And they have been fooling up his head with so much promises. And he's nothing more than a yes man to the elite. A great puppet. And because of this, our nation is in trouble. Because as we can see, concerning the elite's agenda, concerning the, 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 the new world order agenda, Jamaica will be first in everything. Because Jamaica has been marked. Jamaica has been marked to be the role model for every Caribbean islands around the region to follow. God help us in this nation. God help us. But as the Lord has shown me as a watchman, and I prophesy, I'm prophesying, hallelujah, that there's a great earthquake coming to this nation. And as the Lord revealed to me, I prophesy, 
Bless the name of Jesus. That the, the Lord revealed to me that this earthquake comes for two purposes. This earthquake is coming to one destroy, but two also to deliver. It doesn't make any sense. The ways of the Lord is past finding out. This great earthquake, such as Jamaica has never seen in the history of this island. Port Royal will be like, what took place in Port Royal will be like child's play. And the reason for this earthquake is for two purposes. To destroy. To destroy the infrastructure of the wicked. Everything that they have set up. Everything that the leaders of this nation is building to, to enforce this evil agenda upon this nation. There's an earthquake that is coming to destroy, to bring down the cell towers, to bring down every infrastructure that is designed for evil. Bless the name of Jesus. And to destroy the wicked, many will die in this earthquake. And this very same earthquake is going to be the earthquake this disaster is going to be to deliver. To deliver the saints of God who is still here. From the plans of the wicked. Set back the agenda. Put the agenda on alt. God. God have a plan. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have a plan. And why Jamaica has been targeted. Why Jamaica has been marked is for one reason. There's a people in this nation that is so God-fearing. Jamaica is one of the most God-fearing nations in the world. In spite of the wickedness, in spite of the lawlessness in Jamaica, it's one of the most God-fearing nations in the world. And the devil don't like that. How do we know that Jamaica is one of the most God-fearing nations in the world? It's because we are, we are found as a nation in the Guinness Book, in the Guinness Book of World Records. And, and for what reason? For having the most churches square mile. No other nation, no other place have the most churches per square mile. Like Jamaica. And so it doesn't matter if the churches are genuine. If they are fake. Whatever the nature of the churches. The thing that shows. Is that it's a God fearing nation. And sadly to say. My remnant brothers and sisters. Jamaica has been chosen to be a testing ground. Jamaica has been chosen to be a display of what is to be executed to the other parts of the region. And as the Prime Minister said, as the Prime Minister said in the video I shared, he says things are speeding up. He says things are going forward speedily. He said in a matter of weeks. Where have you heard that before? I, I keep saying this in previous videos. I don't speak about years anymore. Where we are at in time, it's about days. It's about weeks. It's about months. And so the Prime Minister in closing didn't hold back. He says, in places we are used to have bank tellers. We are relating to bank tellers. Those places will be replaced. Those job vacancy will be taken over by machines. If you're a bank clerk, if you work in the bank, what does that say for you? 
Talk back to me in the comment section. Love you all very much. God bless.